All right. If you went to jail, what advice would you not take from your fellow inmates? Um, if they told me it's totally safe to bend over to pick up the soap, I'd be like, no, it's lost forever. Uh, yeah, that's all. I don't know. Honey, I mean, what? that's good advice. I'm talking about bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd, I wouldn't take any advice I think I think I'd be like weary of them all trying to can't trust convicts to guide you in the right direction um, I mean maybe you can I don't know don't offend anyone <laughs> <laughs> well a, um, so a famous athlete here went to jail and he played in the NRL called Jared Hayne and we won't go into his whole prison whatever yet, but he got conned out of $780,000 in Bitcoin by one of his jail inmates. Beautiful. <laughs> and somehow a fellow inmate convicted, convinced him that he'd made millions of dollars investing with one of Australia's biggest tech billionaires. And somehow this guy believed it and invested. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not that's that's not how you take investment advice from anybody. Is not like a promise, dude. I totally totally made lots of money with this guy. Now, um, what do you think the guy was in jail for? I'm gonna hazard a guess at investment fraud. <laughs> so, well, I mean, he he did he was in, he's in for 12 years after being found guilty of stealing 4.6 million dollars from his friends and family in a ponzi scheme nice nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he's the guy you want to trust with investment advice and to give your money to for sure yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> i yeah obviously despite stealing money from family and friends one of Australia's biggest billionaires is going to help him earn money whilst he's in seems, prison. So it seems reasonable. Um, <laughs> it's, what, it's what all the tech billionaires do. They help people in prison make money. Uh, so, yeah. And then he, um, so he allegedly received more than $2 million from at least six other inmates in the jail um, but then he had to be moved to a different prison due to fears for his safety <laughs> <laughs> following complaints over his be behavior. Yes. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how are inmates handing over $2 million? What, what's, where are they getting their, their funds from? They shouldn't be able to, right? I don't know. But, well, this, well yeah. there's one guy because he was a famous athlete, so he had seven hundred eighty thousand dollars to invest. But yeah, so then you well, got like I guess two hundred ish each from the other people. So, but if he's not, um, I mean, how are they accessing it? That's the that's the thing. I'm like, how are they? Well, in Bitcoin, it said earlier. So yeah, but you'd have to have it with you. Like you'd have to have. I don't know. I just, uh, it actually says it. it's claimed reports claim that money was transferred by people outside jail who had a, who had access to his bank accounts. Ah, OK. And they didn't maybe ring a, a red flag or be like, hey, wait a minute. This seems <laughs> a bit weird. The dude in prison told you to transfer money. Maybe. Maybe we should yeah. look at what that, that guy is in jail for. <laughs> Maybe we should just question this for just a second. <laughs> no, nah, let's just transfer seven hundred eighty thousand dollars, and we'll all be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it seems uh, seems reasonable. <laughs> it does. Um, uh, how how should workplace money borrowing? So let's say that you borrowed money from a fellow, an employee, or a boss. How should those issues be resolved? With a um, mud wrestling match on Thursday lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit tame. Um, okay. So I'm not going to read the title, but I, I, 
because it gives it all away. But uh, me and my wife have been together for just over 10 years and we got together in school. Um, we have two children and life has always been great until this year. We got into minor financial problems like most people do when struggling for a few years and eventually we were offered money from her boss to pay off credit card debt. Over the next year, we would pay it back to him as we could, but apparently it wasn't good enough. That brings us to today. Now, I've always known her boss had feelings for her. She's very beautiful and attractive. I've just learned after having a strong feeling and looking at her phone that she sent pictures, in brackets meant for my eyes only, and performed intimate favors, in brackets oral, because she felt she needed to make up for the owed money. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another way to pay back your debts. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would expect them to be cleared at that point. If I was the dude, I'd be like, you're going to get no more money. So, Yeah, you'd at least want some money off, not just for the thank you of <laughs> loaning us money. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> also, it doesn't like, say how much it was, which. Yeah, it was probably like $60 or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's probably, um, it's probably worth, worth a couple blowjobs or something. I don't know. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, also, yeah, I had a feeling something was going on. So I just checked her phone. Fuck it, dude. You were probably filming the whole thing. You knew what was going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. I, Most I, banks I, don't give you that option, you see. If you want to pay off your loan early, just come in and start blowing people. Uh, <laughs> well, that would be fun to try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a little late on the home loan this month. Um, could we exchange, perhaps, our old favors? <laughs> I'm willing to come in on Thursday between three and five. Anybody <laughs> who wants to be there. Do you know how fun it, it would be to go into the bank? <laughs> that is a serious offer just to see. <laughs> to see what they would do. <laughs> that is the YouTube prank we need. Someone Damn going me. into their bank. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Um, now how many emergency calls is too many from, from one person? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like in like, in, I'm guessing in the same day or the same time or something, probably like two, I should keep it to two <laughs> unless you got disconnected for some reason. I don't know, but yeah, it's probably, probably just make one, tell them the emergency. I'll send someone out. Well, a woman was arrested for allegedly making over 2,700 false emergency calls. All right. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> seems like a lot, to be honest. And do you want to take a guess at what her reasoning was? Um, she fancies the ambulance person or the fireman person or something. No, the quote is, I was lonely and wanted someone to listen to me and give me attention. Oh, well, that's, yeah, we all do that. That's, uh, that's they're set up for that nowadays. So <laughs> <laughs> what's your emergency? Well, I'm kind of lonely. <laughs> so, just wanted to talk to you for a bit. Um, so she yeah. requested fire department to dispatch ambulances to her home and when the ambulance arrived, she reportedly refused to be transported and said, I don't want to take an ambulance. I didn't make the call. Okay. Right. But they, they know you did, so. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they, they know your address from your phone call. It's all, it's all good. So th this is actually a pretty lame um, amount of calls because it says back in 2013, and there's a link to this article, uh, a Japanese police arrest a woman for calling them 15,000 times over a six-month period. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so many calls per day. It's just <laughs> like, you need to, I don't know. 927 emergency calls in one day, she made. Wow. 
that's there's people who get paid to make phone calls who don't make that many phone calls um no seriously that is like an insane amount like yeah if you're working a full day if you if you actually talk to people making a hundred is a very high amount yeah barely talking to people 500 is a high amount 927 is it's it's wild Yeah. yeah yeah that's a hell of a lot jesus she should be hired as a telemarketer just to. (laughs) (laughs) The idea that there isn't a company out there who goes, this is our dream employee. If she's willing to (laughs) make that many calls. Skills we need to make so many phone calls. That should also be her resume. Yeah. Yeah, You can actually read about me here where I. uh... (laughs) Oh, great stuff. Well, yeah. Well, what's the most dangerous thing you can do on a flight? Um, uh, <laughs> open the door. That's I saw that online recently. I'd say that's pretty dangerous. Well, actually, a guy um, was questioned on a plane for doing math. Math with an A, not an E. Yes, with an A. <laughs> Why is that dangerous? That's um, that's okay. Like a kid's doing his homework or something. A man says he was questioned by airline security staff after his efforts to solve a mathematical equation prompted fears from a fellow passenger that he was acting suspicious and writing in a foreign script. <laughs> Yeah, all those fucking math nerds. That's what you get. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he um, he's a economics professor. And <laughs> was questioned Great. about why he was doing math. Yeah, economics professor. It's a good cover. We really, we all know terrorist is what he actually is. So when you do math in public, freak people out. It's not good. Well, it freaked. So what? American Airlines told BuzzFeed News a female passenger reported feeling sick prior to takeoff and asked to be removed from the flight. Once the plane returned to the terminal and the woman disembarked, she then told airline staff she had concerns about the behavior of a man seated next to her. They're fucking weird. The dude is doing some fucking maths. He's a nerd. That's all. It's fine. (laughs) Yeah. It's not like he was looking at like porn or or something beside her. I mean, obviously for that, you wait until the plane takes off. But um, or you let the guy finish. Yeah. Show a little respect. Exactly. But yeah, it's not. um, I I don't know. That's it. It's it's just weird. But um. There you go. Yeah, lots of people getting off planes for all kinds of reasons. Shouldn't have got on in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, how should you pay? How much, sorry, should you pay for sending a thumbs up emoji? Uh, that's not something you should pay for. So, Well, apparently it is nowadays because a farmer owes $82,000 in a contract dispute over the use of a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> All right. Um, why? So how? What? A Canadian farmer owes $82,000 for breach of contract after using a thumbs up emoji in a text. According to documents from Saskatchewan in. Uh, they sent him a text message to grain suppliers wanting to buy something for $17 per bushel for delivery in October, November, or December of that year. After phone calls with farmers Bob and Chris, they drafted a contract to sell 86 metric tons of flax for $17 a bushel and deliver the flax in November. Okay. They signed the contract in ink and then sent a photo of the contract via a cell phone to the other guy 
along with the message, please confirm Flax contract. But okay. and the guy responded with a thumbs up emoji, according to the documents. But they never delivered the Flax in twenty November twenty twenty one, according to the documents. And by the time by November, the price of flax went up to forty one dollars per bushel. Okay. Uh, they said in court documents he had done at least four other contracts with them via text and said that the only difference this time was he responded with a thumbs up emoji instead of okay, yup, or looks good. Um then his argument basically is that. Uh, the thumbs up emoji simply confirmed that I, he'd received the contract. It was not confirmation that I agreed with the terms of the contract. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of looks like that's what you're saying, though, pal. So you also didn't. It also didn't. You didn't say that you did not agree with the terms of the contract. So you know. Um, I feel like this is a great. If you said everything in this aside and you put it into a more interesting context, let's say that you get caught cheating on your wife and a woman sends you a message of, I want to blow you tonight. You send a thumbs up emoji (laughs) to say that you agreed with the concept of it, not that you agreed to do it. Yes, but then you have video of it happening as the next message. (laughs) (laughs) Just wanted you to know. Filmed it. It was great. Thanks. Uh, well, well, I didn't agree to be filmed, so therefore, doesn't count. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, there were thumbs up. You sent me thumbs up emojis, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to be careful with those online text message contracts, pal. You know, get your um, get your emojis correct. Otherwise, you're paying. I mean. I, I presume essentially he, it means he just has to pay for the stuff they delivered now. So, you know, uh, uh, he has to pay eighty two thousand dollars plus interests and costs for failing to deliver. So he was meant to deliver it. Oh, okay. At a price that was the price at the time, but then by the time it came around, the price went up significantly. Sure, sure. But yeah, the judge ruled. That he had to pay it. Should so the uh, cheating defense actually wouldn't work in practice, but in theory, in theory, my friend was thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's, um, it's a tricky one, but you know, legally, I would say change your name and run away to a different country and just never mention that business again yeah but i mean he lives in canada so that's just the default yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) if you live in a place called saskatchewan that's so hard to pronounce sounds like an exotic uh rash that you would get (laughs) (laughs) that you would get from a towel in thailand and (laughs) yes exactly yes (laughs) And then have to explain that why the use of the towel <laughs> is the reason why you cannot touch loved ones when you return <laughs> for six to eight weeks while the medication wears off. Yeah, that, that hypothetically one, that for your friend. One, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On June twenty eighth of this year. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> How many dumplings is too many? Twelve. I have no idea. That's pretty low. Um, Authorities swoop on Chinese restaurant that challenged customers to eat 108 dumplings. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, so a restaurant in China challenges customers to eat more than 100 dumplings in return for a free meal. Now, if you think of how much 100 dumplings is, that is a substantial. Yep. In comparison, that's like 
That's the equivalent of almost, that would almost make up an entire body worth of dumplings. <laughs> yeah. That, or at least three quarters of, or like a midget. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's at least one and a half little people. Uh, <laughs> sure. Good stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a lot of dumpling. So, 10 by 12 being a good number. <laughs> yeah. um, and they had to do it as quickly as possible to win a free meal. Okay. All right. Um, Easy it was challenges are getting out of control. <laughs> it was called the King of Big Stomach Challenge. Nice. Nice. To drum up interest, the restaurant had advertised the offer on social media to entice patrons only to find itself in the hot seat when the state administration said it would open an investigation into whether it had breached the law. I mean, what law specifically can you break by having too many dumplings? I don't know. It says the law surrounding food waste. Oh, <laughs> Well, if they're eaten, they're not waste. So, you know. Yeah, I not guess. Eaten, they'd probably become waste. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is actually kind of the opposite. Um, <laughs> but apparently that, yeah, food waste is actually a, a significant problem in China. So they've um, they brought in laws against wasting food two years ago. Specifically because of criticisms of online bloggers who live stream themselves binge eating to draw in viewers. Well, that ruins my mukbang plans. <laughs> it does. It does. Unless, unless you finish everything, you're breaking the law. So... Well, yeah. I, or if you eat too much, I think you're breaking the law is the point of it. Well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's binge eating. Yeah, binge eating is against the law there. Awesome. But they don't say anything about drinking, so we're good. No, it does actually <laughs> say that too. <laughs> <laughs> he actually specifically does say <laughs> All right, well, I've just lost 90% of Irish tourism. Uh, <laughs> you know, it'd be funny to like protest the Chinese embassy about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, and then give an interview about how we're here to protest their, the Chinese government's overreach. And <laughs> not letting people get drunk. Yeah. Come on, dude. Fundamental what is this? human right. <clears throat> I'm getting all emotional. This uh, is effectively a ban on Irish travelers. <laughs> <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> they specifically brought this law to ban us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For too long, my people have suffered. <laughs> With poorly poured Guinness in the city of Beijing. And we, like our favorite cuisine is Chinese food. But it's probably not what you think is Chinese food. But still, <laughs> <laughs> you have it. Love it. Uh, you won't let us drink alcohol. Too, I mean, it's too. literally not. Like, even in England, like you have to actually differentiate that you want if you go into a Chinese restaurant, you actually have to speak with them and say, I don't want the UK menu. I want the Chinese Chinese menu. Because they actually have distinctly different menus for the two. Yeah. 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 It's uh, slightly different. It's more <laughs> just, just whatever. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. And dig into it. It's like McDonald's in everywhere else. I want the American McDonald's, not the. <laughs> That'd be fun to go into McDonald's in like in Thailand and ask for no, no. no I want the American McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> None of this Thai stuff. If I want a Thai, I'd go to a Thai restaurant. I want McDonald's. 
exactly, exactly. Now give me a Texas burger and hurry up. <laughs> Or look for like the specific like special American promos and say, no, no, I want this promo. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, now, this may be the ultimate way to find love. Ooh, good, good. Want to take a guess at what it is? Going to China and joining a binge drinking club? <laughs> no. Okay, well, this might be second. All right, okay. Um, I don't know. What is it? Um, something to do with um, speed dating on a plane. No. It requires already being married. Okay, good. Good. Um, so it starts with this article starts with I slept with my wife's affair partner's wife. Okay. <laughs> So they did a wife swap, uh, is what happened. Unofficially, and with no one knowing. Okay, all right, sweet. So that's a nice, it's a nice um, coincidence. <laughs> um, so we got married through almost three years ago. She started having an affair with her co-worker one year ago. Mm -hmm. I got to know that because I had suspicions. I hired a private investigator and gathered evidence that she was having an affair with him. I, I was angry. Then I got a call from the co-worker's wife that she came to know about the affair. Okay. She only had texts they used to send, but I have all the receipts of their hangouts. Together, we decided to con confront them. We used, we used to meet up a lot. She told me that, she she'd suspected his affair since her pregnancy. They have three children together. One day we had an idea that we should sleep with each other as revenge. Nice. We did that and not going to lie, it felt good. We've been meeting and effing for a while. She is an amazing woman. I would say she is better at some things in bed than my wife. There you go. There you go. Um... <laughs> Mostly, I'm very angry towards my wife because in some of her texts with her affair partner, she and the affair partner made fun of his wife. Saying things like she's gained weight, her V was destroyed, and other disgusting stuff. I cannot believe that she would say something like this while being a woman. She even made fun of my fertility issues, saying that I'm not a man because the chances of me having kids is very low. I do not feel bad about my affair. I like the life I had with APs, with the affair partner's wife, way more than my wife. She hardly ever gives me oral, but expects me to give her oral. At least the affair partner's wife was more enthusiastic about it, and it was the best oral I ever had. Sweet, sweet. She, she wants to tell um, her husband... I guess we are both tired about carrying out the revenge affair. We both got carried away. We were both so driven by revenge that we did, we got addicted to it. Um, since we did not have a joint account, it would be easy, but theirs is going to be more complicated. So ultimately, this is the ultimate way to find true love is to marry someone, have them cheat on you, yeah, and then cheat with partner of them as, who they cheated with. It does sound to me like though he first he checked out was she was she like pretty hot. If she was hot, he was like, okay, I'm, I'm into it. So I think uh I think that's the key. If the person your your spouse is having a uh, an affair with has a hot wife, go for it. Um if they don't have a hot wife then per probably try and get them to cheat with someone else. Yeah, I think that's uh, the key part to it. You need to <laughs> encourage your wife to cheat with <laughs> someone who's like, married to a hot person. Yeah, just because anyone you know has a hot wife, like bring them around and be like, hey, he's like really attractive, don't you think? You'd, you'd probably like be into him. He's great. Um, this is my new online course, how to set your <laughs> wife up with someone who's married to someone attractive so that yeah. you meet someone attractive. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. 
<laughs> it's the uh, yeah, it's the circle of life. <laughs> of course, it's six months long. Uh, it costs ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, nine nine dollars. Tell you what, today only ninety seven dollars. And uh, <laughs> but quick, everyone... time is ticking. You only have thirty minutes for this offer. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a great um, plan to have a revenge affair. Or it sounded like they were like, let's just let's just fuck get it out of the way, and then they like we'll tell them straight away. But now they're all falling for each other and everything. So it's kind of. Backfire. What would be even better is like if they didn't want to tell them because it would ruin their relationship. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this it's perfect the way it is with both both lots of us cheating. So by exposing the affair, it ruins it for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So or yeah. maybe they could, maybe they could, you know, come to an agreement and become a, a foursome rather than a, a couple of couples. Yeah. But, yeah. I think, you know, maybe everybody could get involved and everyone would be happy then. So who knows? So it's the ultimate way to do it. I think so. I think so. There was a guy who um, was on all these things about how he was in a three-way relationship and like married to two girls or dating two girls or whatever. And then just out of nowhere, one of them dropped off and then he's just in a relationship with one of them. But like, so boring. you have all this thing about, yeah, being in a double relationship and then now you're not. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 now just in time for us to visit thailand mm -hmm. do you want to guess what's happened there um they have passed a law celebrating bald people with beards no some sort and of that's thing. not the story we're reading but i believe okay. that may be coming okay <laughs> good good <laughs> they actually have the anti-Dave law, banning everyone named Dave from visiting the country. Fucking typical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. They're, they're launching a war with Ireland. That'll be a fun one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, a German businessman dismembered body was found in a freezer with chainsaw and hedge clippers. Okay. Uh, that's not scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually seems more specific that like this guy's being like knocked off by people that he knows or whatever. But they um. Yeah, this story has been developing, but they've arrested like the people that they suspect did it, who all happen to be Germans, surprisingly enough. Okay. All right. Nice. Um, so, yeah, his body was discovered um, and forensic teams in white overalls, hair nets, and blue gloves poured over the scene. Um, experts inside going through with garbage bags taken from a large white freezer. Um, and he lived in Pattaya with his Thai wife and worked as a real estate broker, according to local media reports. His Mercedes E350 was found Sunday in a parking lot of a condo and an upscale area. According to police, there were traces of what appeared to be a cleaning solvent on the seats, dashboard, steering wheel. Um, and then, surprisingly, there was a large amount of money missing from his bank account, which they suspect is linked to the uh, slaying. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is like the biggest story in Thailand at the moment that this guy was... Knocked off essentially, 
and then they found him in a freezer. Um, but the people that they've arrested are uh, pleading their innocence. Uh, even though they were found hiding in a biker club behind the walls. <laughs> I mean, that's where you go when you're innocent. So, you know, um, yeah, straight to the biker club behind the walls. That's it. <laughs> Um, and then, so a Pakistani Thai man who's implicated in the gruesome act is claiming his innocence. That um, he claims that the main instigator, a 52 year old German man, coerced him into becoming an unwilling participant in the disposal of the victim's body. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, obviously, the uh, other people have remained tight-lipped about what has happened since they've been arrested. Um, uh, so, yeah. It's kind of like a developing story that they're still trying to figure out. But, yeah, you can find a German chopped up in a freezer. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what I've always wanted. But um, <laughs> yeah, what a crazy, what a crazy story. So yeah, you have to be careful not to piss people off when you're um, when you you might find yourself chopped up and in a freezer. So well, sometimes, yeah, you just have to watch uh, watch out for the German people. They um... <laughs> <laughs> they have a history. We can't forget that they're nice now, ish, but they have a history. <laughs> you know. They've done some things. Yeah. They, it's on Once or twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't wipe certain things from your record. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Just got, that's just us being banned from going to Germany now. So. <laughs> ah, what are they going to do? Doesn't <laughs> um, go in there anyway. So that's <laughs> oh, I don't know. It seems pretty wild. I mean, the last episode, we did go on a big yeah. deep dive on uh, the Piss Goblin, so... I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Tried to forget about it. Maybe. You didn't forget enough. No. <laughs> the fact that they... It's also, they don't even have just the one place that's like worldwide and notoriously known for the Piss Goblin. But they have another secondary club that's equally as wild. So, you know... All right, fine. We'll go to Germany. Um, <laughs> the only annoying thing, though, is apparently they're like very strict on not being able to film there, so and getting in. So there, there are ways. There are ways you can, you know, just bring in a covert uh, camera setup. <laughs> I mean, you got to sneak your phone, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll figure it out. Um. Now. We are not flying Thai Airways, thankfully, but they, in the related articles of this, I just saw Thai Airways cabin crew forgets to collect meal trays before landing Singapore to Bangkok flight. <laughs> Tiny mistake. <laughs> yep. It's like, hmm, we're forgetting something. What's it? We check. They've all got their food, they've all got their. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big mistake, big mistake. So, um, yeah, they uh, they said that they rang the assistance bell, one of the passengers, but no one came to help. Passengers were told to fasten their seatbelts for landing. However, they said they couldn't adjust their seats probably without folding the tables away. Um, and then finally, the trays were removed as other passengers retrieved their luggage from the overhead lockers. So, yeah, it's. Well, yeah, that's not ideal for um, your, your flight situation there. But um, good stuff um, from Thai Airlines. Whatever. <laughs> Which, ironically, is more expensive than our business class seat. So, 
just to set the uh, <laughs> the standards of what <laughs> there we go yeah low standards to achieve here for the for the business class so yeah okay. yeah so just remember to take the food away yeah <laughs> that's like the premium services they offer <laughs> we'll take your food away <laughs> <laughs> We won't throw your drink in your face, and we will we remove your tray table. Nice. Like Unless it. you ask nicely, then we'll throw the food in your face. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> now, you recently lost interest in becoming a cop in Toronto. Do you want to tell us why? <laughs> I mean, there are many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> This one, you're going to agree that this would change, push you further away from wanting to be a cop in Toronto. Okay, let's do it. Well, do you want to take a guess at what it would be? Um, uh, (laughs) I don't know. Is it is it restrictions on what cops can do? Like they're not allowed to have be at swingers parties on Thursday nights, something like that. Not really. But, well, (laughs) Toronto police have had to close the bar at their headquarters. It's just not, that's just, I didn't even, I wouldn't have even contemplated giving that as an answer. That's just not fair. (laughs) So, fuck whoever came up with that idea. So, Yeah. yeah, they had a fully stocked bar inside a lounge for senior officers at their headquarters. Mm hmm. Um, right. They, uh, but however, an officer entered the lounge hours before being charged with impaired driving. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Even if you're police, sometimes you got to follow the law. So, well, yeah, they're, um, they're actually, their liquor license is not being renewed as a result. (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, (laughs) but, um, yeah, I, the police say the bar was used infrequently, though. Sure, sure, sure. I've been to Toronto. They they like their alcohols, so I don't think it was all that infrequently, but okay. I mean, yeah. How are they going to get people to work there now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe they can appeal it and uh, bribe the judge or something. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. That they, um, well, the police association supports the decision. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, they say it's crazy that they ever had it. Well, chill out. Just stop. It's in a it's a perk of being a cop in a, in Toronto. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll be withdrawing my application for now. <laughs> they reinstate the bar. So I think they need bars in <clears throat> other places, like you know, the pilots' lounge at the airport, <laughs> hospitals, surgeons' meeting room, Sur- surgeons' only bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been a rough couple of weeks of surgery, so. Steady your nerves before the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's absurd. Um, now you've been known to poop your pants. I wouldn't say that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm starting that rumor now. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> That's another fun thing to ask people and <laughs> for a friend. Of course. Let's just say that I was in a bar and I relieved myself. I mean, my friend was in a bar and relieved himself. Mm -hmm. What would he do? Um, Well, a three-year-old has been put in jail for potty training trouble by Daytona police, Daytona Beach Shores police officer. Okay. Um, a three and a half year old child having difficulty getting potty trained was brought to the police um, on successive days last October and placed in jail. 
Um, on the second occasion, the child was also handcuffed. <laughs> How do they have handcuffs for a three-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, there's a quote. He was crying. I was getting the response I expected from him. <laughs> the uh, a lieutenant told the Department of Children and Families caseworker. <laughs> The, the boy <laughs> promised to never poop his pants. <laughs> never again poop his pants, he said in an interview. <laughs> I think this might be the most extreme potty training of all time. Uh, <laughs> shit yourself, you're going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're yeah. actually going to prison. <laughs> Here's the handcuffs and you're in prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put him in there, general population, even for like a <laughs> You'll fucking learn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a um detective sergeant's kid who who this happened to. But okay. now the um lieutenant and the detective sergeant are facing discipline from the city. Um and they're investigating it. Yeah, it's it, it's it's kind of extreme, I would say, uh, <laughs> for a three-year-old. But um, hey, that's they got to learn somehow, I guess. So. Yeah, you're not going to stop pooping your pants. <laughs> I like um, I like all the parenting tips we're getting on the show lately. <laughs> <laughs> this being the latest, you know, teach your kid how to uh, not poop his pants by getting him locked up in jail. It, I mean, yeah, you've got to learn somehow. <laughs> For sure. Sure. You know, otherwise they're going to be a hardened criminal if you don't. True. True. <laughs> um, And then... Oh, so they live together and then they have the child together, so... That's a very odd way of putting things that the lieutenant like they they put it as though it was the the woman's child Mm -hmm. but then halfway through the article they say that he lives with her and have the child together is the thing weird yeah Yeah, that's fair so, part. is he the father or stepfather or? And also, why would you mention that halfway through an article, not towards the start? Well, it's just, you know, most of the articles we have on the show are not very well written. So maybe it's just part of that phenomenon. <laughs> so that's what I'm guessing it is. So approximately nine years earlier, he said he disciplined his four-year-old son similarly after mis- misbehaving at preschool. <laughs> okay, yeah, appropriate. Oh, well, well, this is even more insane. So he told the caseworker that he did that. So he started getting investigated for putting a kid in jail. And then he goes, well, no, actually, I've done it before. (laughs) All right. Worst uh, thing you can do in a criminal investigation. Uh, Don't tell them your previous crimes. So you would think if you're a senior police person, you would understand. Hmm. Don't bring up old crimes you've committed. Well, actually, I don't know if it's actually a crime or whatever, but you don't bring up old things they haven't asked about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Keep keep it to yourself. Uh, you're clearly not a listener to this podcast. We've said that, I think, a few times now. Yeah. Don't. Without 100% on. accurate legal advice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All the finest training we learn at the Southwest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My le- legal degree from the pub. <laughs> Worked long and hard, many an hour, <laughs> debating certain <laughs> topics, and finally got there. 
we've asked many a person of um actually that would be a fun thing to do ask people for advice and then be like great i'm going to be using this in court thanks for the legal advice <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> or financial advice oh well i'll be investing based on what you said on something completely different how do i stop my son from pooping their pants well <laughs> i don't know you do this or this oh great thanks for the financial advice i'll be investing based on what you've said. And then I'll sue you if I lose money. Reasonable. Reasonable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, if we've learned anything, arrest your kid when they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get them, get them used to the being behind bars because that's clearly where their life is going at the age of three and they're still pooping their pants. So... Yeah. Um, now, someone broke into a house naked. Oh, wait. I think we've done that story. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think we did that last week. Yeah. Uh, or this, I mean, there are very, there are certain topics that do come up multiple times. But yes, I do yeah. believe we've um, covered uh, <laughs> that story uh, before. Um, now, what's the most absurd meal you've ever tried? I don't know, but um, it wouldn't be very absurd at all. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. Something quite straightforward, probably. Filling um, a fish at McDonald's. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, nothing too exotic. I don't know, but I'm sure I'm going to find out about something interesting right now. Well, this is entitled "The World's Hardest Dish." Do you want to guess what it is based on that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Stir fried stones are China's latest street food fad. No, that's not a food. That's stones. Uh, <laughs> it's not. No nutritional value in stones, um, I don't think. It's the key ingredient um, in a culinary curiosity on Chinese social media. Patrons are supposed to suck on the small rocks to relish the rich and spicy flavor of the dish, which originated in the eastern Chinese province of Hubei. It would be fun to go into a Chinese restaurant and ask for... Where's the stir-fried stones? I don't know, because, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not excited by the prospect of stones for dinner, but hey. Uh, well, when the uh, chef looks it up and then figures they have, like, random rocks outside, and they're like, well, I'll make you some stones. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, how much are they charging for stones that they likely picked up in their back garden? 16 uh, yuan, which is around $2.30 US. Yeah, that's about. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's not for me, for sure. <laughs> they, um, they put ingredients. Uh, so they pour chili, chili oil onto pebbles, sizzling on a teppanyaki style grill, sprinkle garlic sauce all over them, then stir fry everything with a mix of garlic cloves and diced peppers. Doesn't that just sound delicious? I mean, it would if it wasn't for stones. If it was like <laughs> some chicken or something, it'd be like, that sounds good. So, Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Just... <laughs> <laughs> But it would be fun to yeah try order this in a um, Chinese restaurant. <laughs> in a McDonald's in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to have some of those stir fried stones you got. Now, the problem is if you went to Beijing, you'd actually probably get it on the street. Whereas you need to go to go to a Chinese restaurant in Dublin and ask for stir fried stones. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how successful that would be. 
There you go. Yeah. Learn how to order it like perfectly words pronounce I want and then this dish name in Chinese, but know nothing else in Chinese, but <laughs> nail the pronunciation of I'll have five stones, please. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, freak them out when they are. They, uh... Oh, I haven't heard of that since my days back in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be a fun, fun little uh, side quest. Sure. Now, what's the best job to become a millionaire? Only fans model. Well, I, I think that's second to this. Okay. <laughs> A man in India has become a millionaire by begging on the streets. That's ideal. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> he has a net worth of 75 million rupees, roughly 1 million US dollars, owns two apartments um, in Mumbai worth around $100,000 each. He purchased two shops um, and lives in a duplex. Now, he started begging on the streets of Mumbai as, a, as he could not receive a formal education due to poverty. Mm -hmm. But he's been able to earn um, 2,000 to 2,500 rupees by begging 10 to 12 hours a day um, and makes around 1,000 uh, rupees per... Sorry, 1,000 US dollars per month. I mean... So if you're earning $1,000 a month, it's a long time to get to a million. So he's put in the work. Yeah, uh, but then he's he's also, he owns two shops and he collects rent from them. Oh, yeah. And yeah. makes another $400 on top of that. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. It's, um, it's, it's a new venture. <laughs> he's putting in the work, but, you know, it's... I'll, I'll, yeah, I don't know how, how well it would work in this part of the world, but uh, <laughs> people there, they're not generous. But there you go. Uh, wow. He's known as <clears throat> the world's richest beggar, according to the India Times. <laughs> yeah. So the, the ironic thing is people he's begging and people who have less than him are giving him money. So... Yeah, I mean, in India, you'd have to think that most of the people that he begs from are worth less than one million US dollars. Yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. So, yeah, it's... um, But, again, you got if you're going to be the best in the world at anything, you got to expect to earn more than the rest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think he should try to, like, put on a tour where he goes begging in other countries and, like... <laughs> <laughs> see how he see how his tactics work in different countries. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, he can afford to do it. He he can, he can fly business class <laughs> into another country and then just like start begging right at the airport. Yeah, it's so wild. <laughs> but you do think at what point should someone stop begging? I mean, if it's working, if it's making you a millionaire. You know, I guess that's the, the hard part is, that, yeah, you're trying to go for billionaire. So you got to up your game a little bit, <laughs> go to more upper class areas, get your uh, get your 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 donations up higher, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, or, you know, just start a online course selling. How to beg, how to become how to a millionaire beg. by begging. Perfect. I'm surprised no one's created like a begging YouTube channel with. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask people for money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a video walking up to someone. Hey, bro, can I get like $10? <laughs> I mean, we did go and ask someone here once. And the guy was making a lot of money. But. Thanks. Yeah, he. um. He, yeah, wasn't a millionaire, I guess, so it's not, um, yeah, it's not as successful as this guy who's the most 
successful um, beggar, I guess, according to them. Good time. Now, a Loch Ness monster hunter is complaining about the job. Mm-hmm. And do you want to know what his biggest complaint is? That he can't find the Loch Ness monster. So, kind of. He he says he thought this job would be easier. Oh. <laughs> it's too hard to find the um, Nessie, as they say. Too hard to find the creature that nobody else has found ever <laughs> and get good document, good pictures of. That's incredibly... Wow. And probably doesn't exist given that no one has been able to... Given that it's like, you know, yeah, people carry around HD cameras with them everywhere and there's like no documented hd footage it's quite unlikely there you go i mean it might be i mean i have ai footage of of it so you know it's fact i'm sure you've got ai footage of a lot of things but we don't need to get into that right now (laughs) it did it, it on that note i was thinking of Obviously, like if you're going to have this new Photoshop generative fill where you can just type in, put your circle up thing and you say put whatever there, like surely someone is going to use it for improving food images. (laughs) Oh, yeah, (laughs) that's what I was thinking. (laughs) Yes, I certainly wasn't thinking of... Making a we're just putting cucumber bigger. That's what that's what we were thinking. Let's just admit it. Every person in the picture is going to have a cock in their mouth now because of that. Well, no, I was thinking of like turning a micro penis into a mega penis, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Personal, uh, you know, um, uh, journeys are are allowed, so it's fine. Trying to fit a yeah, trying to fit it into one image. You know, I need to downsize to get it in the one image. <laughs> it does uh, also make me think of uh, an idea I had of um, that you couldn't do this, so that's why I will mention it here. <laughs> Going up to people and like asking what they think of AI, and then like showing them a picture of yourself, and be like, "Well, this is the original," and then here's me afterwards, and then the afterwards is so. In the first one, you're fully clothed, but in the second one. You're fully naked, and there's a giant, giant mole on your leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. If it's if, if it's uh, gonna take away from the other thing, but uh, yeah, it sounds like a sounds like a fun, <laughs> fun um, afternoon. You would probably get arrested, but it'd be fine. It'd be fun. Yeah, that's only, why only three year olds in prison for shitting themselves anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, imagine that your um your uh, cellmate. <laughs> you get into prison, you're worried about dropping the soap and all that, and then all of a sudden you've got <laughs> a three year old in there. Nope, not worse. He beats you up. <laughs> <laughs> Steals all your Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he steals all your Bitcoin. You have to smell his soiled pants. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, how are you supposed to... Have a relaxing day in prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you come to prison, you want to rest. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. You want some sleep. You want to not smell... The child who's likely shit themselves. Likely. That's likely true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just want the basics in prison, and to keep your money from. Yeah, not to not to lose all your money to some dude. Yeah, not a lot to ask. Yeah, it seems reasonable. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, sadly, I don't have any too wild of a story to end on this week i mean well we'll be the judge of that let's see um 
Uh, okay, well, so this one is, what's the weirdest way to eat sushi? I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a weird way to eat sushi? I don't know. Um, <laughs> how? I, I don't know. I don't know. Through a straw. Well, there's definitely a weird way, and I can't believe you actually heard of, haven't heard of this, but there's a traditional Japanese um, thing, which Kanye West went viral for doing this and got more uh, in some controversy. controversy. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, you eat sushi off a naked person. Oh, see, I just eat all my food off a naked person. I don't think that's weird. So, I like to yeah. eat steak off a <laughs> naked person. <laughs> the steak knife and <laughs> just just order a pizza. Be like, cannot be delivered with a naked person. Just put it on them. <laughs> like, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. in certain parts of the world you could organize to. Um. Yeah. Eat a pizza off someone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you probably could. You could even inquire about such services. I am having a party and would need to eat a pizza off. Or a, a steak. Or a steak, yeah. Pizza or steak. We haven't decided <laughs> on the menu. <laughs> or both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it, it's like so popular it actually has a name it's called Nyotai Mori in Japanese um, uh, referred to as body sushi and uh, well not to be confused with Nantai nan Mori which is the male version oh no has some special sauce for you. <laughs> Everybody back off. He's getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be awkward, though. Like, let's say, I mean, I guess the only part of that is that um, you're unlikely to have people that are attractive that order those services. But let's say that you did, and now all of a sudden, you're there, and yeah. Yeah, you know, we all need summer jobs when we're in college, so I'm sure <laughs> you'll get through it. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, but, but the, it actually gets really dark when you look into the history of this because in the traditional um, Japanese thing during the Edo period sake as in the alcohol would be poured into a sex worker's pubic region for drinking purposes Mm -hmm. Um, which is odd because Japan is not known for its wild sexual adventures I don't know. Kind of kinky, those Japanese folk. So, Yeah, but it's a very odd thing to... <laughs> you know. You're going to eat um, sushi and drink sake off a, <laughs> a naked person. Yeah, the next time you have a Japanese-themed party, people are going to be surprised about what <laughs> comes up. <laughs> This is what I want for my uh, next birthday. <laughs> Just walk in and like, well, we brought a naked dude to put the sushi on. Where's the, <laughs> where's the, um, where's the sake go? I'm, uh, <laughs> or, or even even just calling a Japanese restaurant and being like, I'm having my birthday for the birthday party. I want to surprise my guests by serving them the food on my naked body. <laughs> what is the best way to prepare the sushi for that? I feel, I feel like there's a lot of issues there. 
it's gonna it's gonna say it's your birthday party should be you should be eating the sushi not being the the table <laughs> <laughs> so basically in the 60s they used to um the, the, it was further evolved by the hot spring bathing industry, uh, where that was used as an advertising tactic to attract male customers. Um, I mean, I'm sure that would work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, until they then decided to advertise towards families, so then the interest in it became less popular. However, in the 1980s, they started separating men and women in these hot springs. And then uh, it started to become an exotic attraction to add into the uh, thing. Great stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's also yeah. good hygiene. Like, you yeah. Know, when you drink your sashi out of a so, sake out of a. <laughs> Is it that extra authentic Japanese um, <laughs> experience, shall we say? It's the uh, local flavors of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Each one is slightly different. Um, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Why are you going only to this particular place in uh, <laughs> Japan? Well, it's a very special place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Good signs. Good the signs. Uh, the sea also lists some um, restaurant, which I've never heard of, but is essentially Hooters. Nice. And there's a whole term called restaurant, which is restaurant that requires female waiting staff to be skimply dressed. Okay. Well. So you learn well, new things every day here. Yeah. New business to open up. <laughs> 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 Hopefully there will be no protests on the opening night, but, you know, we'll see. Um. <laughs> but, yeah, on that note, I think I have some sake to drink. <laughs> and a steak. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Um, <laughs> you, you deserve it. It's been a long, been a long day. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, take care. And, um, yeah, I will, I will talk to you soon. And enjoy your pizza. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you should actually yeah. just call the pizza place and ask which is the best pizza for. <laughs> so we're having a Japanese party. <laughs> the best? Here's how we're going to do it. Anyway, the cheese won't be too hot, will it? Um, it's all good. Dude, <laughs> can't eat pizza properly. Just can't look at pizza in the same way ever again now. Or so, a steak or a sake. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but those are... We'll get through it. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a good one. Enjoy your yeah. sake. Yeah. And uh, we'll, uh, 